Hello and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 3 and where we left off we were about to invade the Soviet Union and that's what we will be doing in this episode. So Operation Barbarossa 2, let's declare war on the Soviet Union. Okay so recruitment of foreign SS units, we will allow it. And uh, we get a destiny decision. So, encirclement forced Germany into war in 1914 and blockade brought her to her knees. Conquest and ease will neatly solve both of these problems, allowing Germany to fulfill her destiny. And this gives us German destiny until October 20th, 1941. So giving us a good four months of plus 30% national manpower modifier. IC plus 5%. Crude oil minus 10%. Leadership modifier minus... 5%, organization regain rate plus 10%, supply throughput um, 10%, hard attack plus 5%, soft attack plus 5%, and air intercept efficiency plus 25%, and the world will hold its breath events. So, let's start with this one. Adolf Hitler has said, the world will hold its breath and fall silent when Barbarossa is mounted. The world did not fall completely silent. British Prime Minister Winston S. Churchill proposed a military alliance to the Soviet Union on the day of the invasion. And President Franklin D. Roosevelt offered the U.S. land lease two days later. But the world did hold its breath. In Washington, the War Department War Plans Division expected a Soviet defeat in one to three months. Sir Stafford Cripps, the British amb ambassador in Moscow, predicted a German victory in three to four weeks. While the British Joint Intelligence Committee gave the Russians a few months at the outside. Which is a British term for outside bets. You know, the, probably that's the best case scenario. Barbarossa appeared to be, as Hitler claimed, the greatest military operation of all time, capable of defeating the Soviet Union in a single summer. Um, we all know how that went out. So, Barbarossa difficult settings. Specific difficult settings for initial Barbarossa. These modifiers are added on top of the destiny decision effects. So we can go for easy Barbarossa. No, we can go for normal Barbarossa. We can go for no extra modifiers. Hard Barbarossa or very hard Barbarossa. I am going to go for the no extra modifiers option. Because that should just be completely vanilla blank. So we got winter clothes decision. Okay, so our generals recommend we equip our army of winter clothes and special equipment before the Russian winter sets in. This seems defeatist, and a long war is not what we or the Fuhrer expect. If we choose not to equip an army to maintain a good order, gaining a boost in morale and organization, if we do choose to commit them, our nation and infantry will be downhearted that we expect the war to go on longer than expected. Many trains, trucks, and horses will need to be... De okay. So, if we equip them, we get 5%. We lose 2,000 rare materials. We lose 9 unity. I really don't think that's worth it. Now, if we go for... I'm not sure what the difference is between noob choice and the other one, but... Okay. So if we go for this war will be over before winter sets in, we get 9 unity, combat movement speed of 5%, organization regain rate of 15%, and land organization of 15%. I think we have to go for that, because it's such a good buff. Um, and we get that to the 20th of September, so that gives us a good 3 months of um, extra sort of information there extra percentage points so let's go for that and we will go for the Slovakian expeditionary group so the original Slovakia formation was the Slovakian expeditionary army group the Sieg commanded by the Slovak Minister of Defense Ferdinand Katlos it composed of 45,000 men which is a fair amount for such a small nation as the Wehrmacht drove in the Soviet Union, the Sieg had trouble keeping up, primarily because it was not well equipped as the Germans and lacked the vehicles and need for mobility. The Germans themselves were not fully mobile unless unwilling to divert equipment deliveries from their own troops to their allies. The Slovaks decided to reorganize all motorized units of the Slovak army group were combined into a single formation named the Slovak Mobile Command, or the Brigade. Oh my god. Pilsus, commanded by Rudolf Pilsusek. 
He had formerly commanded the 2nd Slovak Division, the SMC participant in several major campaigns of Barbarossa. Thank you, Slovakia. So, we get the Slovak Expeditionary Army Group under Katalos. And we get the whatever that is division. So, we get a motorized division. We get a standard infantry division. A pretty useless militia division and a fast division which is pretty small though okay let's combine them into one of our army corps I'm thinking the 14th army yes. well, welcome to lists command uh, and we will move them into Hungary. Now, air assets wise, we have a huge amount of air assets. So let's get them in the air. And start getting them to punch through. Go for interdiction. And yeah, that's where the majority of our fighter forces are. So let's go for air superiority in these areas. Yeah, we don't want to have it going to the... Uh, go. And same thing again on the front lines here. There we go. So they are all moving out. So we are going to bomb those areas there. We're going to bomb Brett's Litosk and support the 12th Army under Hanriki. This will be one hell of a gargantuan battle, I must say. to connect them to the OBE. Not sure why they're not in there already. Just go put them to there. And this is where the majority of our air assets are fighting out of, is in this northern area. Go for interdiction. Same thing with these troops. Go for interdiction. There we go. Go for ground attack here. Ground attack again. And we'll have these guys. Go for ground attack. No, actually, 
actually, we'll do we'll do interdiction again. Why the hell not? And yeah, so we're gonna go for air superiority. All the way up to Riga. And the same thing with these forces here. There. Now, next up, airborne assault and support from our naval assets. do have an absolutely huge amount of bombers in this area. Right. So, next up will be the invasion of our northern flank. So, we're going to move the panzers north supported by this army group. We'll move this second corps of panzers, like so. And these two flat brigades can form rear guard. Now we have 18th army, which is a motorized corps, which will move up. Like so. And we'll move up the army group as well. 16th army will have the SS divisions move directly up. This small unit of this small corps command here can move up. And we'll move these guys up here to form a part of our defensive structure. This core moves forward, and there we go. Now, next up is 8th Army. 8th Army is another motorized formation that will move up to Wilno. And we will look to surround. And we'll move up the HQ into this position. Go. That's good. So, first Panzer. Now, first Panzer group plus the flat divisions could attack here and then move up. We want to avoid the marshland wherever possible, and unfortunately, we have marshland right in front of us, um, in front of the Panzers, which is a bit of a pain, but can push through. So, we will look to move towards Minx. And then we'll look to move these units around as well. So, 14th Army, which has Von Weiss in command, will move up parallel and let's secure the southern area there we'll move up to the Pripyat marshes go. Right, 
So next up, we're going to attack Bretzlowitz head on. And look to flank with these units here. Ah, we have a really... Okay, we have more troops under this army corps than I thought we did. Right, so... I think 6th Army is a motorised army. Yeah, and you guys are standard infantry. So, standard infantry can move up to this position. Then 6th Army, which includes the motorised Hermann Goering Regiment, can move up towards encircling the whole marsh area. And same thing with this last core here. Move up to Homo. There we go. So, 4th Panzer is in charge of going for Kiev. So, we have Von Kleist, whom we can move directly to Kiev. This is our strongest Panzer Corps. Weakest Panzer Corps can move straight into Kiev as well. And finally, these guys can move up to there. And then this is the one I'm going to pay most attention. So, don't have a whole lot of troops. Then you guys put the base and move like so. should complete the encirclement there. So I'm going to put this on free speed. And I'm just going to turn off the unit breakdowns. So allied objectives are bombings, hostile bombings. So we are being bombed in Mammal, in Pungigan, Gumbian, Silvaki, and Johannesburg, but we are bombing them more than they're bombing us. Yeah, and we've got one air combat going on. Yeah, we outclass them. Is there anywhere where the battle is not going well? So. We're attacking all across the front. We've got one hell of a modifier. Force them back there. Uh, 
Okay, so the USA have decided to go for the undeclared war. Despite its nominal neutrality by 1941, the United States was steadily moving towards war with Nazi Germany. After signing the Lendley Sack in March, President Roosevelt declared a region of the Atlantic adjacent to the Americas the Pan American Security Zone. Within Estonia, the United States naval ships escorted convoys bound for Europe. On April 10th, 1941, USA performed their first hostile act of World War II when the destroyer attacked a German U belt, which had just sunk a Dutch freighter. I don't think the landing went off. Ah, oh, no. It did. Okay. I'll break through. And they have decided for the motherland. And we can get access to Army Group Romania. So, what this does is... This gives us a huge Romanian Army Group. An absolute shed ton of units. And we can attach that to our OBE, which increases our forces substantially. We get another 300k or so, uh, and some extra planes. Now, if I remember correctly, yes, they do have a few decent units. Now, our encirclement is going to go through straight here. So if we take all of their units... And ask them to attack in one spot. And then we'll keep these ones static. And we just took a load of text that finished. Keep that one going. Uh, and yeah, we're a bit low on the old. We lost a little bit of our um, extras there. Okay, so we've only got 14 days worth of supplies. So I am going to funnel much more into our supply needs. Right, so there we go. And there we go, so we're up to 200 on the old IC at that point. There we go. And that's sorted. Right, we yet to take a single province. Uh, and we have lost an army corps. That was only a Minimal army corps, anyway, to be honest. Uh, we have been attacked in the province. And looks like the fighting in uh, Brett's Litstovsk is quite difficult. And there we go. So we lost 695. They lost 19,513 in that first major battle. Uh, let's just make sure we don't keep losing supply. And there we go. The first of our captures of Soviet Union territory starts to take place. started to push into their territory from Romania. The more of the units that we can capture here, the better. And 
and these are shattering a lot quicker than I thought they would. Okay. So we've won the Battle of Palanga, where we lost 900 and they lost 13,000. And we're getting a lot of these battle streamers for doing these major victories. I probably shouldn't have committed so many HQs, but what can you do? We're getting just that extra little bit of damage that we might need done done. I'm not going to do that trade. And we're trading one for one over there. there and we are going to push them out here and there we go got one little rebellion there in french territory it's hardly worth worrying about and then we now have the 14th panzer so what we're going to do is i'm going to start building a reserve for if the allies try to land and we can get now the Carpathian Army Group. So on June 27th, 1941, the Hungarian government declared war on the Soviet Union. Although well, they've been mobilizing their mobile corps and air defense command since the 22nd of June. Always wary of their neighbors, particularly Romania. The Hungarians kept the majority of their armed forces in Hungary during 1941. However, all their best units were sent east in support of Operation Barbarossa by early July 1941. And they were initially grouped under the Hungarian Carpathian Army Group. And that's it there. Now, as a twist of fate, I'm going to put them directly under our own command. And what does that give us access to? It gives us access to two units of mountain troops and some motorized troops. So not a huge amount, but fairly high quality. Um, and I'm going to move them up into position here. This is going fairly well. Hopefully we'll get our first encirclement soon. And looks like we are pushing them on all fronts. building officers as much as we can and we're losing a little bit from convoy warfare okay so can't keep up that trade with japan even though we're importing a small amount of crude oil and we can't keep up that trade with iran for the same reason These long-range submarines are not doing the job I thought they would be doing. There's obviously no convoys here. At least not compared to the uh, the massive damage we're doing there. Uh, ooh, can we spare? Oh, we can. Yeah, we're going to do that. Some more heavy cruisers that are due out soon. And we've broken most of their resistance along the front line in the first few days. And we're now moving to complete the encirclement in the south here. And we're making our way through the marshes.
Uh, they've got a fair amount of mechanized troops, to be fair to them. Uh, and, oh, what's the Battle of El Amin? Lame. I'm just going to redeploy to there. We've got a little bit more ability to research. We've got a 1942 there. So let's get these 1941 techs rolling. Taking quite the hit on the old manpower. Just busting through their front lines. And yeah, we're gonna quite easily defeat that uh, little little nuisance there. It's pretty much so far so good when it comes to this uh, invasion. Oh, this is a good song. I think they're starting to wise up to what we're doing now. And they are rapidly losing organization on this last... Don't crash on me. There we go. <laughs> Pardon me. And there we go. Still generating three spies a day. We probably don't need to generate three spies a day. And there we go, so. And with this, we should have moved. Aha! So, this is one of my favorite parts of uh We do get access to, in Vienna. That's Munich, not Vienna. Right, here. We do get access to the Corpio di Spezione Italione in Russia. So the Italian Expeditionary Corps in Russia was a core size unit of Italian Royal Army uh, which fought on the Eastern Front during World War II. The CSIR was composed of three divisions. The 52nd Motorized Division Torino, the 9th Motorized Division Parsubio and the 3rd Cavalry Division. And we do get some Swedish volunteers, some Vichy reaction operation. Although the Soviet Union maintained full democracy with the Vichy government, these were broken after Vichy supported the right during Operation Barbarossa. Consequently, this led to an increase of communist underground activity in Vichy France. Great. Uh, so, we've got a whole load of things here. So, let's expand the airbase. We get the Rad. Bublatin. So throughout World War II, the RAD continues to serve its um, the Reich's Agriculture Department, I think it is or something. To serve its originally established duty of training young men prior to service in the workshop by providing construction and agricultural work for the nation, but also throughout World War II, the RAD increasingly took part in more militarized roles. During the Norwegian campaign and campaign in the West, and those hundreds of RAD units took part in supporting the troops by helping to ensure that supplies continue to reach the front over clear roadways. They also helped to repair damaged roads, built and repaired airstrips, constructed coastal forts, yada yada yada. So we will form this rad. And we will take Flemish volunteers. And yes. We will be unhappy with the fact that we've had our Axis ships taken. So there's our Swedish units. I'm not sure where our Flemish units are. 
probably there we go yeah so but let's move our units in Vienna up Let's attach them, I think would be best, to Von Kleiss's unit, because it said they was attached to Von Kleiss's unit. So that's the second Panzer group. And... I'm going to move them up now. God, they've got a unit with 22,800 troops in. Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ. With some crap live armour. Oh my god. They're going to be like in a meat grinder. Right, so... Let's get... Yeah, these escort techs. That's 42. We've got cruiser techs coming along nicely. Don't need to invite anyone else to the faction. And we just run the Battle of Riga, which means we now have a jumping off point. Now, following on from that, yes, we do have this landing unit. Can't quite land there. But they can land there. Let's go for it. Another fairly daring landing. And ah, Uh, we just got another general, Gunter von Kluger. Thing aerodynamics advanced, so stop doing that one. Get that 41 tech there. Next level cemented armor. Ah, we can start getting the next level of carriers. This is all really good is what we ideally want so yeah and then we can get start getting the next level operating techs um nope we're not gonna go for that one and um, we're not gonna go for that one and we are producing much more supply than we're using Seems to me like we're overrunning Russian divisions like no one's business. Can see some units transported. Now let's move up the siege core. So in the first 10 days we've made some pretty crazy good progress and we've managed to push them out of here. 
Ah, so we've lost a bit of our spy network. We've lost the commercial. Alright, so Ribbentrop will report on Soviet demands. So Soviet forces. So, future of the Soviet state. The Red Army was the biggest in the world as we started our preemptive strike. With the advantage of surprise, we can deal with their numeric superiority. To save future, to save the future peace, the Red Army must be reduced to a scale that we must no longer threaten the German Empire. So, we can go for total humiliation, hard terms, moderate terms, generous terms. Let's go with moderate terms. Soviet industry. Let's also go for moderate terms. Soviet specialists. Uh, we'll go for hard terms for that one. And we will accept that metal trade. That is obviously not going well. For a unit to shatter this early on against the Soviets, a little bit worrying. And it does look like we've managed to finally push them out. Let's just go on a direct route now. Because they have no units left, really. Divisions aren't quite yet in position. We've got a little way to go yet, but the first of these two Jaeger divisions is ready, so let's give them a commander. Let's take him. And yeah, you you'll do. Very good. And we will support attack with them as well. The aim being to just make sure that this encirclement is completed on time. Attacking there, you're gonna go there. You're gonna go there. Let's just do it like that. Uh, yeah, we will take the armored. Right, so foreign correspondence of all the international was summoned by Ribbentrop in the Foreign Office. He read a prepared statement in which the Soviet Union was accused of having conspired with the British to develop an attack plan against the Reich. Ribbentrop continued with lengthy descriptions of alleged Soviet troop concentrations in all regions of the German Soviet border, Finland, Hungary, and Romania. He further claimed that many incursions of Soviet aircraft into airspace of Reich and its Axis partners have been noticed over the last months. Consequently, Hitler had ordered the Wehrmacht to counter this threat by all means possible. Many Grons were left in disbelief about these allegations. To prevent uncensored reports about the start of the Russian campaign, the justification of the Nazi regime, all communication lines out of Berlin were temporarily disconnected. We have, we had no choice. Uh, and then that's the justification for the invasion, which you can make the argument that there is evidence to support that Stalin was indeed planning a, um, you know, an invasion uh, eventually, but that nah, wouldn't have been for a while. So it's very flimsy. And 
Here we go. Looks like we're attacking now with all of these divisions. And we're going to support attack with the 12 Panzer just to make sure the job gets done. haven't been able to get many of their troops out of the pocket so that's good and uh, we have Gunfuck on Kluger who's just been put into the field uh, Norway is requesting yeah sure you can build whatever you want right, let's pump up our industry a little bit Looks like we are well and truly forcing our way forwards. Running way ahead of our panzers. So in the first month we've done very well. So that's just a story about the fact that the German aces recorded heavy wins on the Soviets. But these numbers seem crazy. 500 Soviet aircraft. I mean, seems like a lot. But Hitler meets with Gundarin, has requested a meeting with the Fuhrer. Hitler reluctantly agrees to complain that Heinz never has anything nice to say. True to form, Gundarin warns Hitler that Germany's tanks are in danger of falling behind Soviet tank technology. Hitler nods and agrees, hoping that this will satisfy Gundaren's knees. However, Heinz knows his Fuhrer too well and pushes for something more solid. Suddenly, Hitler snaps and shouts out, What do you want? Um, and what do you, what you get are two completely different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hitler responds, getting officer recruitment on bill speed. Uh, let, oh, hopefully, we get the 50% one there. That one. And we get a little bit more of this here. These will form our push back into the C units. And I'm just going to move them to Tobruk. Because we did have Rommel shatter rather embarrassingly. go and supplements nearly complete and I'm not quite sure how many troops this will capture but it seems like a bloody lot and yep we will take those Dutch volunteers as well thank you very much attack so 
So we haven't been able to make progress there. And we haven't been able to make progress there either. But we have kept their units trapped at least. Which was a pivotal aim, really, of this offensive. Panzers will get there on the 13th of July. I'm going to complete another encirclement here outside of Kiev. general aim will be to completely crush the uh, Soviet southern flank. Uh, I think we will end the episode in a minute because I've been recording a bloody long time. Uh, some more semi-motorized infantry out. Ah! There we go, Iran. Welcome. Uh, there we go. They got some extra units on the uh, the border. What about Afghanistan? Twenty three point seven six. Not far. You guys, twenty one point. Hey, that's gone up. Hey now. There we go. The encirclement is complete. So we've probably captured the better part, I would imagine, of... Ooh. I don't know how many units. Probably a pretty decent whack. And then we'll complete another encirclement here. Slightly smaller one. The whole northern front has completely been eviscerated. So before I end the episode, let's just have a little look at... No, we lost a, a few, but uh, we've been losing a little bit, but they've done more damage. And in the last month, they've lost 35,000 manpower, apparently. So about 8,000 total. Uh, and a lot of IC days. But anyway, I will end the episode there. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our beginning of our invasion of the Soviet Union. Um, I don't think we've really lost too many units yet. Um, as I say, we've had one division shatter, which was unfortunate. And we are, as I say, completely starting to form a little encirclement here. Um, I'm just going to move these units north and south. And then we have the first Panzer moving in this direction as well. The aim will be to create an even bigger encirclement here, though, of all of Army Group Center. Whatever their center is, which will leave them only with these units here and some units in the south. Um, you can already see, though, they're starting to react. But it doesn't look like they've got a lot. Uh, and when Finland, when we bring in the units from Finland into it, that will be really the hammer blow I think because we can just push straight into these areas here with a not too shabby force I must say um, although you need a commander so let's give you a commander and the same thing with you yeah okay but anyway thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode when we will continue our invasion of the Soviet Union as you can see, we've already reached our first objective point and surpassed it in the north. And we're looking to do the same now 
and reach the Dinipa River in the south. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.